All right, here we go, uh, learning about percent yield. So we learned about limiting reactants earlier, and those were pretty difficult, but uh, or lengthy at least. Uh, percent yield is much more straightforward, so good for you for having this one. So uh, all you have to need, need to know is that um, this little equation here, percent yield is the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield. And this is typically what you would do after an experiment. Um, you're, um, you would want to understand um, how well did your experiment go? Uh, did I get close to what I was supposed to get? Um, and uh, it's, it's required for any type of academic thing. Um, and um, it's basically, an, uh, well, we're trying to compare what would happen, what did happen, and based off of what would happen in a perfect world. We don't live in a perfect world, so you don't normally get 100% yield. I'll explain more in a minute. So uh, the theoretical yield is that maximum amount of product that can be produced from a given amount of reactant. And so we uh, this is based um, from stoichiometry. So you have to do a little bit of stoichiometry to find this one, the theoretical yield. Now the actual yield is the measured amount of product obtained. Now sometimes this is called the experimental um, yield, all right? Um, or uh, it's basically what you just found in your experiment, what happened in real life. And so you, the percent yield is just the actual over the theoretical. Now there's another one that you may see, and that's percent error. Okay, percent error is going to be the um, actual minus the theoretical over the theoretical times 100. Now, uh, if your actual yield is less than the theoretical, then you will end up with a negative. Um, so we uh, don't like negative, so we'll take the absolute value of it. If you don't know what an absolute value is, that just means that you, um, if the number is negative, you make it positive. If it is already positive, you keep it positive. That's, that's, that's all it is. Um, so uh, let's just try an example. Methanol can be produced from the reaction of CO, carbon monoxide, and hydrogen gas in the presence of a catalyst. Here we go. And we make methanol. Um, if 75 grams of CO, carbon monoxide, reacts to produce 68.4 grams of methanol, what is the percent yield? Okay. Well, uh, so here's your starting material right here. And we can calculate our um, theoretical yield here. Now this guy right here is your actual yield. So actual yields are given to you in a problem if it's a word problem. They're always given to you. Um, you don't actually have to go and find them um, or look them up. Now, uh, the theoretical yield is going to be calculated from this. So we're going to start from 75.0 grams of CO. And we're going to see how much we would actually, we, we, would, we could produce if this was 100% went all the way. So grams of CO and the moles of CO. And so we need to go to the periodic table. Uh, the molar mass for carbon is 12. The molar mass for oxygen is 16. 12 plus 16 is 28 grams per mole. And then we'll change moles of CO into moles of our methanol, CH3OH. Okay, and so that's a one to one ratio, one to one. And then we'll do one more. We'll change moles of methanol, CH3OH, into grams of methanol, CH3OH. And so we need to go to the periodic table again. That's going to be 12 plus 3 plus 16 plus 1. That should be 3 times 1, but you guys get, you know what I'm talking about. The molar mass for that is 32. If you hadn't figured out by now, you could Google molar masses <coughs> very easily. Uh, and they will tell you. 85.7 grams. So that would be a theoretical. 
video. So this is our actual, and this is our theoretical. Um, if it went 100%, uh, well, well, actually, I'll talk about that in a second. So uh, let's go ahead and do the uh, percent calculation. Let's do 68.4 grams. Um, that's our actual yield divided by our theoretical, uh, 85.7 grams. So grams cancel out. Multiply by 100. And we'll find out that we get 79.8%. Okay. Now, if you do, um, that's your, well, that's your percent, you know, that's how efficiently your reaction ran. Now, if you take 100 and subtract it by 79.8, that would be your percent error. So 100 minus 79.8 is 20.2% error. Okay, and that's your percent yield. So percent yield and percent error can be confused sometimes, so make sure you try to keep them um, apart. Uh, I believe we'll only really, um, we could test for yield or error, um, but we will provide both equations to you. So um, it's not going to be too difficult. Um, now, uh, reasons for this. Why would that happen? Well. It could be that the reaction just doesn't um, isn't really favored that way. It could be that the reaction um, is actually happening in the reverse reaction as well. Uh, it could be um, some impure liquids um, or impure substances here. Um, some side reactions could be going on. Um, a lot of different things will go into um, why you would have this type of error. So don't feel bad if you get a, if you don't get a hundred percent error. Um, yield, it's fine. Um, there's a lot of things that you just really can't um, uh, overcome. It's just the nature of science. All right, so now at the bottom are some practice problems. I will post pictures of these answers later, but these are these are for you to practice um, on your own um, just to get study for your test. All right, have a great day.